Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to continue to listen to this series. My name is Nicole, and welcome to NM Enterprise 7. For you who have recently subscribed, thank you. And for those of you all who are passing through. Today's message, maniacal people. Some of you all know these people as being deranged. You may have described them as mad, insane, cracked, sadistic, brain sick, delirious, disordered, and many others have described them as simply put evil, okay? Sometimes it's not just in the way that someone looks wild and crazy, have a crazy laughter and all of that. But sometimes you have to wait a while for them to show who they really are or what they're struggling with. And they may appear as if they're okay. Those who are in the church, sometimes you dismiss the maniacal person. You make excuses because the person hasn't gone off on you. Therefore, they're okay. I believe that many of the churches, schools, libraries, and other public settings are not prepared enough for maniacal individuals. Individuals that did not take their drugs are weaning off of drugs are on some sort of illegal drug mixed up with prescription medicine, um, refuse to take their medicine. And so when they're coming down off of, you're not prepared. And we're seeing this time and time again. The media is not going to tell you that the side effect of the drug has something to do with. All they're going to do is tell you about the person and what the person did, you see, because there's big money in pharmacia. <laughs> there's a lot of money to be made. And if there's more people benefiting from a product that man has created, that woman has created, that they've promoted together, they're not going to tell you, well, we're going to take the drug off the market because of what it does. Mm-mm. They're going to keep on pushing, keep on promoting, keep on telling you that the benefits outweigh the risks, even at the cost of people's lives. I took a look at the National Library of Medicine National Center for Biotechnology Information. The most common characteristics of drug-induced manic episodes were increased activity, rapid speech, elevated mood, and insomnia. Patients who developed mania often had a, listen to this, prior history, family history, or current symptoms of mood disturbance. Listen further. The episode, episodes were most commonly treated by discontinuing or reducing the dose of causative agents. Okay? The man didn't just become maniacal. The woman didn't just suddenly act wild, crazy, difficult. Okay? Mania is a psychological condition and it causes a person to experience unreasonable euphoria, very intense moods, hyperactivity and delusions. And I saw all of this firsthand at one of my workplaces out in Colorado, at the home front years ago when I was visiting my grandmother I saw this out on the street and I saw the after effects of what the maniacal person did before the police picked them up at other locations. Mania or manic episodes is a common symptom of bipolar disorder. 
Mania can be a dangerous condition for several reasons. People may not sleep or eat while in a manic episode, according to Healthline.com. They may engage in risky behaviors and harm themselves. People with mania have a greater risk of experiencing hallucinations and other perceptual disturbances. And for some of you all, you may end up hearing or witnessing or being a part of somebody's maniacal behaviors. It's a disturbing fact. Get your security teams ready over at the schools. Get your security teams ready over at the churches. Lord Jesus, I'm speaking to some people. I don't want to spend the money. We don't need that. I trust this person. I trust that one. As long as he takes his medicine, as long as she takes her medicine, beef up your security at your church, at your school, at your library, at the courthouse, even at the White House. How many times do common citizens have to yell, scream, and tell people that there's a problem ahead? Something that you could solve, but you all decided to cut the funding. You all decided that, oh, well, you didn't want the security officer to sit there all day. And, uh, well, you can't seem to get anybody because, well, it's a boring kind of job. Well, make it interesting. There's more that they could be doing other than sitting down. Look. Healthline says some people are prone to mania or manic episodes because of an underlying medical condition or psychiatric illness. And then they use bipolar disorder as an example, but there are so many other disorders. A trigger or a combination of triggers can cause mania in these people. And some individuals are talking about they don't want family members and friends to be medicated. Are you kidding me? After the writing has been on the wall, I mean, we've got medicated people who come through this channel and they will even encourage that some folks need to be on some medicine <laughs> because they've been there. They've done it. They've seen a movie. And sometimes for some individuals, it works because they work because there's people around them that work with them. But for others, it don't work because there's nobody that's making sure that the individual who is on the treatment is doing what he or she's supposed to. How is the individual that's on the treatment supposed to keep up with the treatment? If they're the ones who's going through the conflict, the challenge. If they're having a bad day and they're forgetful. Where's the person? Did you take your medicine today? You're leaving it up to the person who has mania to manage their own behaviors. There isn't any wonder why some people resort to illegal drugs and why some people are saying we do need to make these things legal. Because some of these so-called solutions are not readily available in some of these communities. It costs for this. It costs for that. He got to get on the bus to go get his medicine. That's what was happening with some of the folks that um, I had uh, witnessed at one of the workplaces where I tempt. And the responsibility of that organization was to deal with some of the most difficult people, most challenged people. But not challenging enough to go to jail, but challenging at its worst. Walking among us, riding buses, working at some of the popular companies out there. As long as they're on their meds, they're good. But one particular individual, he had ended up running out of his medicine before he could get on the bus to pick him up, to take him to the facility. And so it was a long bus ride for him. 
And by the time he got to the location, he was still relatively calm. He was a little frazzled. And then before long, we heard yelling. We heard cussing. We heard name calling. And then he started getting violent. And they secured him in a room to keep him from attacking all of us. And it was a sight to see. This woman who was a nurse had the strength of at least three men and lifted that man up off his feet and put him in a bear hug and squeezed him until he started crying. And then he calmed down long enough for her to give him his meds, which he had been saying before he started cursing and acting violent. I need my meds. I need my meds. And y'all taking money from me. And y'all this and y'all that. And he was just a ya ya and upset and angry and cussing. And he was ready to kill people with his bare hands. Environmental changes can trigger mania. Stressful life events, such as the death of a loved one, can contribute to mania. Financial stress, relationships, and illness can also cause manic episodes. These are real issues for real people. But God didn't say we're supposed to just say, well, God bless them, and we'll just look the other way when he rocking like that, when he yelling and cussing. We just going to start praying a little louder. No, he didn't say that. That man or that woman may have an undiagnosed, unchecked issue going on. And somebody better call the paramedics. Notice I didn't say call the police. Call the paramedics before it does become a police issue. He keeps showing you that something's not quite right with him every time he is in the service. And you all want to say, well, you know, if it's a demon, then we'll just cast it out. And nobody in there has that type of Jesus gifting that they can cast out a demon. Because there are those lukewarm churches that God has spit out. And that's why he's not getting free. But of course, certain churches are not going to take that responsibility. Oh, no. We're just going to say if he act up, we just call the police. God will show you. Various signs before the person goes off. The person on the bus that was driving the individual down to the location. He may have heard, he may have seen some things on the way down. The people riding the elevator may have noticed some things as they were getting off on their floors. The people who bumped into him on the way down the hallway may have felt some kind of way as he walked by. And by the time he got to the nurse, all hell broke loose. Is there someone, is there someone that you sense isn't right at the workplace that's not secure? At the church, that's not secure. At the school, at the library, at the courthouse, at the White House, that may be even a part of the team. But something is off about them. And I'm afraid they're going to take the knowledge that they have and they're going to attack. Is there somebody who has that sort of feeling? I'm validating you. I'm allowing the Lord to lead me to give you the information that you need so that you can get some eyes on someone. Number one, note what you have witnessed, the day, the time, the person's name, and what you've observed. Number two, you talk with those individuals who are responsible for that person, for that department, for that team. Number three, you talk with security if security is around and if you have a photo of the person you give that photo over to them so that they can be watchful 
Number four, if it is something that you suspect they are carrying that could potentially harm, then you need to file a police report. They may have used that before and everybody was like, it's okay, it's all right. He promised he would never bring it again. Whatever that weapon might be, you need to file a police report and indicate what has happened previously and what is still going on. And if you think that it is something that's going to require other authorities on a higher scale, such as FBI or CIA, then you do what you need to do. Because there are those who are slowly breaking down that have unchecked, undiagnosed issues. And their intention of lashing out on people for some of them, while they still got some sense about them, it's planned, it's orchestrated, it's diabolical, and they're using maniacal individuals to get some things done. And we know in the spiritual realm that people are aware of this sort of thing, but as long as it doesn't happen to them, they look the other way. As long as the Mancurian candidate doesn't turn on the establishment, they're good with whatever they put that Mancurian candidate up to doing. In the spiritual realm, we see that there are the unseen forces at play here. The type of spirits that Jesus called out in the Bible. The type of spirits that those who are gifted in delivering demonic entities out of individuals could be able to do. If you can get that body over to the one who delivers. You see, <laughs> so we pray in Jesus mighty name that folks who understand how serious this is, understand prophecy. Don't look at folks like us as quacks and stupid and dumb. And you don't know what you're talking about type of people. We pray in Jesus mighty name that you will get the necessary resources and implement the types of things to safeguard yourself as well as others from the potential of something dreadful happening. This sort of thing isn't just drug induced, but we know that there are those sorts of over the counter medicines, as well as those things that have been toted around media that are counteracting with things that are going on in the body. And this isn't broadcasted everywhere. But God himself is showing you these things so that you can prepare yourself when you see a car that's driving erratically, falling back. When you see an individual that is walking funny, you know, acting a bit strange, knocking stuff over, looking weak. Individuals that may have signs similar to that of a cold or a flu or pneumonia, but something else is going on. God, in all his grace and his mercy, has shown us things that appear on the body that impact the mind so that we distance ourselves, so that we can call and get people some help, so that we can tell people, don't come to this location because some people have been exposed to A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. You see? Maniacal people... Let's understand that they don't always know what's happening to them. And this is why we've got to be the eyes and the ears, you know, for them. We can't just sit back and just, oh, it's, it's okay. God will just touch them and he'll be fine. Oh, well, you know what? Uh, I don't know what's really going on with him, but, you know, maybe if he drink a little bit of this or smoke a little bit of that, he'll be fine. And I saw the after effects of that sort of thing when relatives would encourage drinking and smoking and using illegal drugs. People lost appetites. People ended up getting all sorts of other sicknesses that showed up in their Bible or in their Bible, in their body. Yeah, they should have been in their Bible. I mean, all sorts of activity was going on with these people losing their hair. They were skinny back in the 90s. A lot of people were on crack cocaine. 
And when they didn't get their crack, they were going off. They were stealing people's stuff. They were taking their own things. They were selling their things for dirt cheap. It's like, you you want what for, for this? This is like, you know, your grandma's, gr- great grandma's, whatever. And you want what? Just $10? You see. So when you see these sorts of behaviors happening around you, you don't look the other way, you don't ignore, and you definitely don't take any type of instruction or advice from the maniacal person. (laughs) And we got people who will do that. You're really taking what he's saying seriously right now. You really are looking at everything that he's saying as being wise. And do you know that the devil uses people to sound smart? to sound wise but they're dealing with their share of issues various personality disorders let's get them some help we pray in jesus mighty name for those of you all who understand who want to help individuals that you will do so in the way that god uses you we ask for courageous people we ask for bold people we ask for people who are willing to go to extra mile We're asking in Jesus name that your angels surround them, protect them as they're going into atmospheres where there are maniacal individuals, individuals who at times are not medicated, don't know that they are struggling and individuals who refuse to take their medication and individuals who unfortunately have ran out. We're asking Lord Jesus that they will get the treatment that they need. We thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do in Jesus name. Thank you, as always, for taking time out of your schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube, Inno Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. We do welcome giving on this channel. For those individuals who have yet to do so, feel free to check the description box. Blessings to you.